Levofloxin is one of the medication that is classified as fluoroquinolone. It is the L isomer of ofloxacin. Ofloxacin is a fluoroquinolone which can exist in the two stereoisomers, L isomer as well as D isomer. Among these, levofloxin is the pure L isomer of ofloxacin. Levofloxin is available as tablet as well as oral solution. It is also available as a premix ready to use injection. Levofloxin can be used for treating the bacterial infections, particularly it can be used to treat the respiratory bacterial infections. It is one of the medication which can be widely used in the treatment of community acquired pneumonia as well as to treat acute bacterial sinusitis. It can also reduce the acute bacterial infection in the people with chronic bronchitis. Apart from these respiratory bacterial infections, it can also be used to treat skin and skin structure infections, chronic bacterial prostitis, and even for treating complicated urinary tract infections. However, for treating chronic bronchitis and uncomplicated urinary tract infections, levofloxin should be carefully used as it may be associated with few of the serious side effects. And it can be only used when other alternative treatments are not successful. Today in this video, we are going to discuss the key facts about this medication. Now, let us the precautions of this medication. One of the important precautions of levofloxin is the development of peripheral neuropathy. This medication can affect the function of both small as well as large axons, leading to paresthesias, loss of sensation, hyposthesias, decreased sensation, and dysthesias, disturbance in the sensation. It can also produce a neuronal weakness that may result in tingling sensation as well as pinning sensation. This peripheral neuropathy may be observed after initiation of the therapy and it may be progressively become more stronger and it may become permanent if it is untreated. Another important effect of this medication is on the bones. This medication can produce tendinitis, inflammation of the tendons which may result in tendon rupture. This may also be associated with uh, joint pains and muscle pains. The risk of tendon rupture is more pronounced in the elders with ages above 60 years. That's why this medication should be carefully given in the elders and whenever this bacterial infection should be treated with a fluoroquinolone, in such conditions only levofloxin can be given to the elders. Few of the risk factors can also increase the tendon rupture, particularly medications like corticosteroids can increase the bone fractures by reducing the bone mineral density. Even in people with kidney, heart or lung transplants, the risk of bone fractures may be increased. People with strenuous physical activity may also have increased risk of tendon rupture while taking this medication. Any previous history of tendon disorders like rheumatoid arthritis can also increase the risk. Therefore, while taking levofloxin, all these risk factors should be considered and strenuous physical activity should be avoided to eliminate extra strain on the bones. This medication can produce phototoxicity. So while taking this medication, exposure to the direct sunlight may produce some skin reactions leading to redness, itching and burning sensation. That's why direct exposure to the sunlight may be avoided in people who are highly sensitive to this medication. Levofloxin can produce hypoglycemia. This is a significant reduction of blood glucose levels may be observed with use of this medication and this reduction of glucose levels may be observed even in people without any existing diabetes. Therefore, while using levofloxin, the glucose level should be carefully monitored and in case of severe hypoglycemia with symptoms like excessive sweating, weakness, fatigue and dizziness should be properly monitored while using this medication. Levofloxin can produce diarrhea, particularly it can increase the risk of Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. It is common with use of antibiotics because antibiotics can inhibit protective gut flora. In case of CDAD, this medication should be avoided and appropriate fluid and electrolyte management should be done in order to restore the condition. And if it is required, protein supplement should be given to restore the loss of protein from the body. This medication can increase few of the central effects. It can produce nervousness, agitation, insomnia, even dizziness and confusion. As this medication enters into the brain, it can produce these central side effects. They may be observed even with the first dose of this medication. 
and in case of significant central side effects this medication may be avoided in severe conditions levofloxacin can also induce the seizure and it can reduce the seizure threshold that's why in people with any risk factors for developing seizures levofloxacin should be carefully used and the important effect of this medication is on the muscle this medication can produce muscle weakness that's why in people with any myasthenia gravis this medication can further increase the muscle weakness and can induce severe muscle pains and joint pains that's why in people with the history of myasthenia gravis now let us the side effects of this medication levofloxacin mainly produces few side effects like dizziness insomnia and headache it can also produce few of the gastrointestinal side effects like constipation or in some cases it can produce clostridium difficile associated diarrhea dyspepsia can be observed it can produce some chest pain fatigue and joint and muscle pains it can also produce rapid heartbeats nervousness and tremors levofloxacin can increase the qt interval this may increase the risk of developing one of the condition torsadis depointis it is one of the fatal cardiac arrhythmias that is associated with prolongation of the qt interval in the ecg the effect on prolonged qt interval is common with fluoroquinolones and it may be further enhanced in people with hypokalemia now let us see how this medication works levofloxacin is a fluoroquinolone it particularly inhibits the bacterial dna replication it inhibits one of the enzyme dna gyrase this enzyme is required for producing the negative supercoil in the bacteria that is required for dna replication levofloxacin inhibits the dna gyrase activity thereby it reduces the conversion of positive supercoil into the negative supercoil of the dna this results in the inhibition of dna replication thereby it inhibits the bacterial replication levofloxacin can also produce a breakage of dna strands thereby it can also produce a sidle action on the bacteria now let us the doses of this medication levofloxacin is available as a tablet at different strengths starting from 250 mg to 750 mg it's also available as an oral solution at a strength of 25 mg per ml which is intended for pediatric purpose the doses and the treatment duration depends on the type of clinical indication that is going to be used and it may be individualized in the people for treating the community acquired pneumonia levofloxacin can be given at a dose of 500 mg once daily and it can be given for 7 to 14 days otherwise it can also be given at a dose of 750 mg for 5 days so that's all about this medication levofloxacin i hope this video is useful to you if you really like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thanks for watching see you in the next video